Hi guys, in this video we're going to be making a peacock cake topper. We're going to be using the Renshaw's modelling and flour paste here. Now you can use it white or you can buy it ready dyed in blue. On this occasion I did dye mine blue with a sugar flare colour just for the simple reason that I'd run out of the blue Renshaw's modelling paste that was already dyed. Um, hence my hands being a horrible colour. So knead it till it becomes easy to use. You'll find it's a bit stiff at first. And I'm gonna start by rolling it into a ball. Just make sure there's no cracks in the ball. You want it to be nice and smooth. And then what I'm gonna do is start shaping it at the tail end. So I'm gonna roll it between my palms to create a little bit of a teardrop shape. So you're creating a bit of a point where the tail is gonna go. Once you've got it into that teardrop shape, what I'm gonna do is start rolling a neck. So just pinch it leaving a bit at the end. Can you see there's a ball that we're creating at the end that's gonna become the head? And we're just gonna keep pinching. Again, if the body seems to be quite fat, just give it a bit of a roll to thin it out a little bit. And you want a little bit of length to the neck. So once you've got the neck nice and slim, you're just gonna tilt it upright to create the shape of the bird now. And again, I'm gonna do the same with the tail. So I'm pinching it a little bit to make it a little bit flat sort of from the top and the bottom of the tail and then just pull it upwards a little bit into a curve and you should be able to sit it upright then on your work surface. So you can leave it as it is if your neck's not moving about too much. If your neck feels reasonably firm you won't have to add extra support. Now mine's quite soft because I've had it in my hands for a while so what I'm going to do is insert a cocktail stick from the bottom of my little bird up through inside the neck. Just make sure it doesn't come out of the top of the head when you're pushing that in. Um, it's just going to give a bit of extra strength to mine. So now what I'm going to do is work on the features on the face. Now I've got the picture of the last peacock that I made which was on top of one of my wedding cakes. So I've just got that to hand to copy from. And what I'm going to do is create two little eye sockets just by pushing the bottom end of my paintbrush in either side of the head just to create two little holes. You don't need to go really deep. If they're not very wide, just wiggle your paintbrush around a little bit to make them a little bit bigger. So taking a modelling tool, I'm just going to run a slight line from either side of the circle. So I'm running to the back of the head and towards where the beak will go. Just slightly like that. So taking the modelling tool, I'm just going to create little sort of arrows pointing downwards just by pressing in various places down the neck. You can fully fill the neck with the little lines if you want but I'm just going to put a few on just to give a feathered effect. So next we're going to use the modelling tool to create a couple of curved lives, lines even for the wings. So just going to do that on each side and again two little curved lines on the back as well and I'm going to use the big sort of flat end of my modelling tool now to push in little feathers on the wings so I'll just give you little curved lines like that and again just repeat the same on the other side so now onto the tail and we're going to use more of the blue modeling paste this time we're going to roll it out I'm not rolling it really thin and I'm leaving it slightly thicker at one side than at the other and what I'm going to do is using my circular cutter I'm going to cut into my shape now the thick bit is at the bottom and the thinner bit is across the top curve of that circle or semicircle and I'm just going to hold it against the back of my bird to see if it's the right size obviously depending on the size of the bird you've made you might need a bigger or smaller cutter than what I've used again I'll put all the links to all the materials and tools that I've used in the description box so I'm just shaping the tail a little bit now so I'm leaving my tail just to one side to give it a little bit of time to firm up and in the meantime I'm just going to add some eyes. So I'm just using the black modelling paste. So this stuff's ready dyed and again I've just got the Renshaw's one that I tend to use. Just create two round balls and we're just going to insert those into each eye socket. And I've just put a bit of water in the eye socket, just a small amount just to help it stick. You can use edible glue if you prefer. Okay so what I'm going to do now is just take a really tiny piece of white modelling paste and I'm just sticking it just underneath where the eye is and I'm just gonna pull it out and sort of stretch it along underneath the eye just gently with my modeling tool. Now if the blue's still quite wet just do this very gently otherwise you'll end up creating a bit of a dint in the face. You can if you prefer let the bird dry before you add the white bit 
so that you've got a harder surface to press onto. So we're just pulling that along the bottom. And now I'm adding a second piece. So the second piece I've rolled into a little bit of a teardrop shape and I've just overlapped it slightly over the last one. Again, I'll just flatten that down a little bit with the tool. And we're just going to roll a tiny, tiny ball of white that's just going to go now on the black on the eye. And you just want to do the same on the other eye. So I'm now going back to the tail. I'm just going to pick it up. I'm just angling it how I want it. So you might want yours so it sticks directly up or you might want to pull it so it slants slightly backwards. I'm going to create a bit of a curve on mine. And once I've got it to the shape that I want, I'm just going to rest it against one of my cutters just so that it stays in that shape until it has dried. Now, it doesn't need to be on the back of the bird when it's drying, so I'll just move mine to one side and I'm just going to prop it up and I'm going to let that dry. Taking a bit of orange modelling paste, now I've just dyed this, just need a really small amount to create the beak so I'll start with a little circle and we're just going to squash this to shape now I do apologize I've ended up with it off screen there so start with almost a bit of a cone shape is probably the best way to describe it and then we're just going to push it on to the front of the face again you might find if you've left the bird to dry for a few hours or even overnight that it's easier to push it on without bending the neck or breaking the neck so just picking up the modelling tool, I've just indented two nostrils at the top of the beak. So using an edible dust and a dry brush, I'm just going to gently dust a bit of gold onto the area where the wings are. If you prefer it without, you don't have to add it. And again, just dusting a small amount over the top of the head and a tiny bit on the end of the tail. You can find the links for what I've used in the description below as well. So just using a smaller brush now, I'm just going to paint a little bit on to the beak. Now I have used a tiny bit of water mixed in when I've painted it onto the beak. Or if you prefer, you can use vodka when you're mixing it in with the dusts. I'm going to put a small amount of gold just around the top of each eye. So now back to the blue modelling paste and we're going to create some feathers for the top of the head. So you only need a small amount and we're going to roll three teardrop shapes. And we're going to put the three teardrop shapes next to each other squashing them together and we're going to put these on the top of the head so you might want to use a little bit of water or edible glue in place where we're going to stick them and you're just going to push them on and I'm just going to curl them upwards a little bit to give them a bit of shape and I'm just going to put a little bit of gold then on the top of each one again if you prefer to let them dry before you put the gold on you can do that's fine so we're moving on now to the tail feathers but I've let this overnight now to dry so that I can press on a little bit harder with the tail feathers. So my bird and the tail bit is now hard. So taking my blue, I'm going to roll it out nice and thin and I'm just going to cut some teardrop shapes and I'm just changing the shape of them slightly. So if you haven't got a cutter that's teardrop shape, that's fine, again, don't worry. You can roll a teardrop shape, squash it flat and then create the feather shape by hand. So either way is absolutely fine. Don't forget to point each feather at the end. So now I've dyed a turquoisey greeny colour at my modelling paste and I'm going to take a heart shaped cutter this time. So I've got a few different sized ones and I'm using my largest heart shaped plunger cutter. And I'm just going to stick this to my feather now so that the point of the heart is down towards the bottom of the feather. So again, taking the next size heart cutter down, I'm going to put an indentation within the heart that I've already put on there. And now going down to my smallest size heart cutter, I'm going to go back to my blue and I'm going to place the little blue heart at the bottom of the green one. Now to make it a bit more feather-like, we're going to use a cocktail stick or you can use a knife or a modelling tool, whichever you prefer, to just put little indentations in around the edge, just pushing in. You can push right through and it just starts to make it look a little bit more feather-like and we'll do this all the way around and down the side. And you can even take little triangles out if you want it to look more feathery. And I'm just going to run a line down the middle. So going back to my gold dust, I'm just going to mix it with a little bit of vodka this time for painting it on. And what I'm going to do is just paint the heart that we created with an indentation. So you should have the green, then the gold, and then the blue. Now we're going to repeat the exact same process for every feather that we make 
So once you've got your feather made, we're going to stick it in place. Now it's up to you if you want to start from the centre or if you want to start from the edge. I'm going to start from the edge on mine. I'm going to stick it down. I'm going to overlap it so it comes out further than my base of the tail. So you can see at the back that sticks out further. And what I'm going to do is repeat the process, making all the same size feathers to go all the way along that arch shape. So on mine I've put seven large feathers on, but obviously it will depend on the size of the tail that you've made as to how many feathers you get on. And what I'm going to do now from the next layer is we're going to take the blue, but I'm just going to add a little bit of the turquoise to it so that it's a little bit lighter in colour for the next layer. So we're going to create the feathers for this next layer in exactly the same way, but we're just using a slightly smaller cutter this time. So this time, once you've made your next set of your smaller ones, you're going to overlap these with the existing layer that you've put on. So I'm going to put them so they're in between each feather. Keep this going all the way around and then I'll add the gold on as well. We're repeating the same with the next layer, but because they're quite small this time, we're not going to get all the hearts on. So I've missed out the turquoise and we've just painted the gold with a tiny bit of blue in the center of the gold for these ones but again we're going to stick these on in between and slightly lower down in the last layer so using the same process as you did before and we'll do one more layer we've added a bit more turquoise to it now most of this layer is probably going to be covered by the base of the tail but we'll add it just to make sure that there's no bits showing through so again, I'm just placing these on now. I've not worried about making these with loads of detail on because they will be, they will fall behind the base of the tail. So taking a bit of the spare modelling paste that I've got, I've mixed it with a bit of water so it becomes tacky. And I'm just pushing that under the base of the peacock's tail, kind of creating a bit of a icing cement. And we're going to push this against the tail now. So it is important at this point that you, the peacock itself and the base of the tail are dried before pushing it on. You don't need to leave your feathers to dry at this point though, that's fine to stick them on like this. Now if I let go, the tail might stay up, it might fall backwards if I leave it there for a few minutes. So you're best propping something behind the tail just in case. So I've just made a dummy cake for this one just so that I can show you an example of what it looks like on a decorated cake. Now this one I've just stenciled with royal icing. I do have a video on how to royal ice a cake although it's not the same pattern as this one and the cake itself is just airbrushed so I'll put a picture of that finished up for you now. If you do get a chance to make the peacock do pop over to my Facebook page and share your pictures with me I do enjoy seeing them. Hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. If you liked this video and would like to see more, please click on the images of the other videos suggested. Also, please do subscribe to my channel using the button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can also visit my cake website and my Facebook page to see more cakes and ideas.